Adam Chris from MMANews.com being joined by the new 126 pound WBC national Muay Thai champion. I'm talking to the Palestinian golden boy Ahmad Ibrahim. He set out to win that belt, a lifelong dream in the making, and he finally got it done. At WCK, World Championship Muay Thai, matter of pride. It went down a couple of weeks ago, and I got my man joining me now. The WBC champ, the champ is here. Ahmad Ibrahim, what's going on, brother? Adam, the only thing I was thinking about was the post-fight interview with you. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, you're th- you were in thinking ring. about that in ring? In ring. After round one, this is in the bag. I got to talk to Adam. He's <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I always appreciate the conversations. I always, I always love seeing you doing big things, man. You continue to impress time after time. The one of the most active, if not the active, fighters in the United States, man. Your your accolades speak for itself. So, I'm glad to call you a friend. I'm glad to call you family. Outside of that, and uh, man, it's just a pleasure to see you doing big things. First and foremost, lifelong goal accomplished, years in the making, got it done. How do you feel, man? Uh, as you can see, it still feels very fresh to me. I just got back to training, so trying to focus on what's next. But this is such a big deal. It's still just as just as uh, satisfying. Yeah. So we ran into each other last weekend at Freedom Fighter Promotions, and uh, I saw you running around with that belt. I actually got to get a picture with that belt. Uh, you were you were passing it around. It was almost as if the people were the champion along with you. And that's what, something that I admired a lot. I admired a lot because not only were you busy, so you kind of had to like, you know, like give it to people to hold for you, but so many people that supported you along the way were able to hold the belt, feel the belt, be with you. And like, almost just like that passing around. Just tell me what that was like. Cause not many people do that. Every, a lot of people are like my belt. I'm keeping it going up. I mean, I grew up in the Muay Thai community. So all the OGs in the community who know me know how bad I wanted this since a young age, you know? So it does feel like we all want, you know? And plus the, gener- the, the younger generation in the gym, the kids, they think this is like the coolest thing in the world. So I've, I've never been the type to make my accomplishments only for me. You know, when I say I win, we all win. So I ended up just passing it around to my older teammates who haven't got to see it yet. And it was just, like, it was good for Philly, for East Coast Muay Thai, you know. East Coast doesn't really get the most recognition. So when one of us win, we all feel like we win. East Coast is very, very supportive of each other. And Rami's first show, it was all the locals. So I got to see all my loved ones, all my far teammates, people that I talk on social media in person. So it was just nice. I brought the belt so I could celebrate one more time with everybody there, you know. Yeah, 100%. But one thing I did find absolutely hysterical was talking to your father who <laughs> brings me aside and he says, Adam, tell my son I'm upset with him. I was like, hold on, this doesn't mean, well, why are you upset with him? He needs to take that belt off. <laughs> nah, it's saying with me. It's not going anywhere. I haven't made it to the gym yet. I take it to the gym. Right now. So uh, looking back, man, I know we've talked a little bit at Freedom Fighter and you said you felt amazing. You looked good. Absolutely. I mean, you heard him a bunch of times throughout the fight. How did you feel looking back on your performance? A um, couple of perspectives. One, like, damn, this fucking guy was tough as nails. Like I threw the kitchen sink at this guy. He would not budge. So all respect to him because I let it go on him. He just ate it. Like he did it. Not, I didn't even get to an eight count. Like there were so many times where I'm like, he's going to go to sleep. He's just, he was tough. There's a reason why he was the champ for so long and it makes sense to me. But other perspective of my performance, I, the most thing I'm happy with, I already know I kick hard. I already know I fight strategic. I already know I know how to fight off the ropes. I'm slick. The one thing I don't do when I fight is I, tend to not let my hands go as much as I want. But this fight, my hands were flying. Three, four, five punch combinations. It Everything, just all the stars just aligned. And every aspect of Ahmed that I knew was there came out. You know, I have like a lot of, uh, for some apparent reason, I have a lot of confidence issues. I forget that I'm good. I forget that I'm like one of the best pros in America. I, all that like escapes my mind when it comes to my skill. So I always get like a little too nervous before I fight. And I'm like, shit, like, can I compete at this level? And then I'm like, wait, I already did. But like, shit, maybe this guy's better. And like, like things in my head just play. 
And then I watched my fight and I'm like, oh shit, I'm good. I'm actually pretty good. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually really good. So for it to just align that way, it gave me the hugest confident boost because I feel like every fighter needs it every now and then. We forget to give ourselves a pat on the back. So my hands were perfect. My elbows, my clinch, my knees, my kicks, everything was just, everything was just there. And it was just my night, man. It was just perfect. It was your night, man. Adam Rothweiler, he's a game opponent 100%. But um, yeah, dude, like you were saying, and it intrigues me with you talking about kind of like uh, <clears throat> mental health is a huge aspect in combat sports right now. I mean, Tyson Fury was just talking about it recently. I mean, he talks about it quite often, but was just on Ariel Hawani's show talking about it. So a lot of people talk about it, and I'm not going into depths about it that way. But do you think more fighters kind of struggle with their own confidence level before they go into combat or do you, I mean you say you don't know why you do it but do you think it's a common ground for other fighters I I don't know I mean I know some fighters who are just so just flowing with confidence and I don't flow with confidence until I'm in the ring so I don't know if these people are good actors before the fight or if they're genuinely just so confident, I was like, like I, I'm, I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm far from confident before I fight. I'm freaking out, thinking of every negative thing about myself. And when I get in the ring, that's when the confidence hits, you know? So I don't know if people are just really good at playing it off backstage. I look comfortable, I do. You could, last thing you would ever tell us that I'm not confident in myself. You can't notice that I keep those demons to myself, but, I think every fighter definitely deals with confidence issues at one point, you know? Hmm. So again, you beat Adam Rothweiler for that WBC national strap, that one you've been just dying for for the longest time. Now, I talked about your, <laughs> I talked about your activity level, man, and how how long you've been just staying at it, and you've just fight after fight after fight. And Adam Rothweiler, he hasn't defended that belt in some time. Do you think your activity played a factor in the fight? Hundred percent, hundred percent. I think Adam Rothwater definitely had some ring rust, and I'm not sure about his age, but I'm, I'm sure he's a lot older than me. Mm. But when it comes down to it, I was active, and I've been working towards this, and I generally just deserved it. You know, that there's there's a saying that like wanting it is not enough. Like that saying, who wants it more? Like I think that's bullshit. Because I'm pretty sure Adam wanted it. Like. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like that, that saying never sat right with me. Who wants it more? No, it's who prepared for it more. I don't care how much you want it. What did you do to beat me? Did you do enough? Did you do more than me? Did you do the more the last three years? Have you been spending thousands of dollars to fight the best people outside of America? No, I don't think he has. And I think that's what showed in the end of the round, end of the round, end of the fight. Is You could just tell who wanted it. You know, he was in my face, but he hit me twice. I hit him six times. It's just, I was just on another level that night and nothing was going to stop me from getting this belt. Did he surprise you with anything? Uh, no, he didn't per se surprise me. Nothing I didn't expect, but he did hit me harder than anyone has ever hit me in the first round. I remember you saying that he hit hard, but the, when we were getting in the conversation about it, it was, uh, how do we, how are we was, talking about it? It was more so heavy. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. that's exactly yeah that's what can you describe right. that for some people that might not fully understand it because i mean it's tough to grasp okay, in those so words when someone hits you hard when, when someone hits you hard it just hurts you know what i mean but when someone hits you heavy you feel it in your whole body like it's like getting punched and then getting mugged it's completely mm -hmm. different you know i've been hit hard many times but he hit me with something the first round and it was so heavy i can't even remember what he hit me with I don't even know if it was the first round. It might have been the second or third. I have no idea. But he rocked me with, I think, a hook. And I just saw stars. And it was just like, holy shit. No one noticed. My uncle didn't even notice. I don't even think Adam noticed. But he 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 rocked me heavy with, with his hands. And you can tell by the way he punches. He punches from his legs. Like, he punches proper. Like, he puts his whole body into it. He's not just throwing his hands. He punched very, very heavy. So that, that's probably the only thing that got me. Can you put into words the feeling that came over you? I mean, I, I saw you collapse to your knees, and but can you put those words, can you put those feelings into words when you heard and knew? Man, 
what made it perfect was the crowd. Like my family was there, my friends. Like I haven't had a crowd like that in God knows like three years or something like that. So to hear like just I'm not gonna lie, as the scorecard started to be said, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like what is happening right now? Like they're not about to finesse me. Like I won this fight. I heard 50-45, and I was like 100% me. And I heard 49-46, I'm like, definitely me. And then I heard 48-47, and I'm like, if they do this, all hell is breaking loose in this fucking venue, bro. I'm telling you, if I get robbed, my crowd will lose their shit, and mayhem will happen. But when I heard and knew, I just... I wish I could thankfulness, humbleness, gratitude, tears, man. Like it just, I just collapsed. And I just started crying. I just couldn't hold all that emotion, like with everybody there and just knowing how long I wanted this belt, you know? And like tomorrow, if they vacate it, I don't even care. Like I told you this before the fight, like mm -hmm. what happens after this will never be as good as winning this belt. Like and it, it there were some things like that you know personally that would have made the moment a lot better, which I'll say eventually. But the majority of like that whole experience was just, I don't know, man. It was just beautiful. It was just, everything was just aligned. That, I've never had a feeling like that in my life. So I guess it'll be, that feeling will be topped when you do vie for the WBC World Muay Thai title. So that's going to yeah. be, I guess, the next goal that we have to worry about. But my, uh, my next question, though, was you said you could happily retire from fighting if you won that belt. I don't think... I, I think I'm I'm not only speaking for myself, I think I'm speaking for your fans, I think I'm speaking for the world. I don't think we've seen enough of Mod Ibrahim. Yeah. So can we can we can or when and when can we get him back? Uh so I always thought after I won this fight, I just wouldn't care. But it's weird. Now that I won this, I want to fight even more. Now like I feel like I have a chip on my shoulder. I was a hunter, now I feel like I'm the hunted. You know, whether I defend the belt or not, I don't even care. I just, I'm not done. I still have some fire in me. I thought, like, it would have been like, all right, I'm cool. You know, I got my childhood dream. Now I'm like, I'm not going to say I have other dreams I really want to accomplish because I don't. Like, I generally, like, if I win a world title, that's great. But, like, I'm not, like, if I get to one, amazing. If I don't, I, it's not, like, going to break me. If I retired and I didn't win this, that would haunt me. Mm. Now I feel like I can just fight to just represent my country and my gym and my name. Like I don't have anything on paper that I want to win now. You know what I mean? Now it's kind of like, let's just see what doors just open for me and see where it could take me. You know, I'm it's fighting in December. That's my next fight. I'm going to Thailand for IFMA. Yeah. So I'm going to Worlds. So that's a good thing. You know, it's just, this was, this was everything to me. Now what happens after this, we'll just see, maybe go to MMA maybe go to boxing. I don't know. I just, just to see, man, I love how, how one chapter it does. I'm not saying closes, but you got that chapter done is what I'm saying. You got that belt. And now is, it almost seems like a sense of relief. Am I wrong in saying that? Huge relief because I, like there was many conversations I had with my uncle and my uncle, sometimes he talks to me like my uncle and sometimes he talks to me like my coach. When he talks to me like my uncle, he says, bro, fighting is not worth it. Like all the shit my uncle accomplished, respect was never put on his name. Mm. He was never given the recognition he deserved. It didn't help his pockets. The gym did. And building fighters and his reputation as a coach. So he keeps, he, he would tell me, yo, like, that shit's not worth it, bro. Open up a gym and just live your life. And I kept telling him, I can't open up a gym or stop fighting unless I get that WBC belt. You can say all this shit's a waste, but at least you did it. Hmm. But when he talks to him like a coach, he says, be active, fight, 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 fight. So that's a little bit confusing for me. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> but I'm like, I got it. I got it. That's it. Like This is all I ever wanted. And I put a post up on Instagram yesterday. 
And I, I wrote a couple of things like thankfulness, gratitude, happiness. At the end of it, I said, you won't understand this feeling unless you accomplish something you dedicated your life to. You know, and Man. if I win gold in IFMA, that's lovely. That's a huge thing for USA. But if I don't even go, I'm just like, all right. Like, only reason I want to go is because it's my spot and I deserve it and I earned it. So I'm going to take it. I'm not going to let someone else take the spot that I earned. So I'm going to ride this, this this wave and I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep fighting. But this was this was it for me. This was this is what closed my chapter. Now I'm writing a new book and I'm going to see what happens next. Man, I'm so eager to see what happens in the new the, the upcoming series of Ahmad Ibrahim, because like you said, there's just so many options, boxing, MMA. Um, I mean, the list goes on, but the sense of relief that it brings you um, having that target on your back and then you only looking forward because there's nobody in front of you. That has to feel amazing. It does. But like I said, it also feels like being a becoming the champ is the easy part. Like staying the champ is harder, you know, and I want to defend it. Don't get me wrong. I do, but I'm mm. definitely not going back to the West coast. So if you're watching this and you feel like you want the belt, that's perfectly fine. I'm cool. I'll fight you, but I had to go to California to fight the champ. So I feel like it's only right. Whoever wants the belt can come to me to fight me for it. That's, I think that's how it should go. You know, I, I, I just, I want to defend it in my area this time. Not to always have to fly and be the out of state kid when I'm the champ now. And Philadelphia is a great location to have fights. I mean, uh, the, the East Coast I mean, is a great is a great. We're up an hour and a half away. It's safe Jersey? to my yep. So I really don't have to go all the way down to WCK again or the West Coast, you know. And honestly, to be honest, West Coast promoters never really showed me the kind of love that I deserve. We don't have to get into it, but you already know what's up. I know. So I'm comfortable going to the West Coast like that, you know. So let let everybody and let the challengers be on notice that if you want a shot at the WBC national champ, you got to bring it to the East Coast because that's where we are now. That's where we <laughs> reside. <laughs> like East Coast Muay Thai never gets any love, man. Like like there's only three WBC champs in Philly, and I'm the third one. So it's a big deal, you know. And they should come to us. Fair game. Couldn't champs agree more, man. Well, you got to come take it, right? Like. So before I let you go, man, like I said, you were at Freedom Fighter Promotions and you were everywhere. Talk a little oh. bit about talk a little bit about that promotion. What you can expect and what the fans can expect. Not only that, because you you saw it all. You were behind the scenes. You were running a ton of stuff. Oh. But the Muay Thai that we saw that night was something that I've never seen. Oh. It was gorgeous. Like my, I seen my uncle work so hard on this show while training me and I couldn't really help because I was so busy with, like, with my fight, you know, I had to make it, I had a bad time. You know how it goes when you're in camp, you got to do everything proper. But after the fight, I was able to dedicate that full week to get everything done that I was supposed to get done. And it definitely was a little bit, it was hectic. It was stressful for me. So imagine how stressful it was for my uncle who did everything on, on the legal side by himself. Mm. And we got to the fight and setting it up was the hard part getting everyone have the roles. People don't come on time is, you know how it is. So having everything situated to run the show smoothly. But once it started, it didn't stop. Everything was boom, 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 boom. Every fighter was ready. The matchmaking was the best part. The fights were absolutely insane. There was not one boring fight out of 16 fights. And every fight was three minute rounds and it was, it was beautiful. And, you know, I'm a part of the staff and I'm a part of the, I have a big role. So I was able to like, I know what some of the fighters were offered. And to know what my uncle is offering fighters, it's things that I always dreamed of as an athlete to be offered. So this goes to all the pros. If you want a promoter who actually gives a shit about you, come to Freedom because I know what my uncle is offering. I know how he's treating people. There was times where I was like, bro, you're like, you're paying for amateur hotels like people don't do that like, mm. like like you're bringing in amateurs from across the world who can't sell tickets amateurs like pros maybe you fly them out but you bring in amateurs west coast versus east coast no one's selling tickets you're doing that fight out of the gener the generosity of your heart promoters don't do that if it don't make sense promoters don't do it Rami made the fights he wanted to see 
simple as that. Is that for what it's want to see? And for what it's worth, it was packed. I it mean, packed. it was it, it wasn't a matter of this person didn't sell tickets. This person didn't sell tickets. I agree with what you're saying and how promoters want the tickets to be sold from their fighters, respectively. I get that. But those tickets were sold, period. I mean, that pack fight, show was packed. When you make good fights, people come. Yeah. Simple. Not always about the money. Sometimes you just do shit from the – just be a good human being. Make good fights. People are going to come. Muay Thai fans are going to come, you know? <laughs> and they did. They came out in numbers, man. It was an impressive outing. For what a first show, it was what, probably one of the smoothest I've ever been a part of. Exactly. What show do you know serves Arab food? I, I, I didn't make it over to catering, but as you know, as you know, though, when did I have time? Like you said, it was so busy. Boom, 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 boom. When I, really? when I, was, when I was getting out of the ring, I was getting right back in the ring, mm-hmm. which right. was a great thing to do. It was a great thing. I'm not complaining about that at all. That's why I brought my little lunch sack, but you know what I mean? But, uh, but no, you're, you're right. It's not just pizza, burgers, and just nasty food. They took care of people. It was, it was a great, great great outing a great night and it was a great promotion to be a part of man i couldn't say enough great things about him but you being the fighter you being the champ and everything and being on the behind the scenes aspect of stuff i wanted to get your perspective even though it is your uncle but i know you're an honest guy yeah it, 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 i just want someone to treat me the way he treats his fighters that's every but, pro dream like he just treated us like like athletes not pieces of meat that he can make money out of you know, and there's so many promoters who are scumbags. Like, the promoters are nothing without us. Yet they make it feel the opposite. That we're nothing without them. That's um, I caught Rami talking to um, several of the champions after the fight. And it was one-on-one conversation. Obviously, it's between them. I'm not getting into it. But it's, it was him expressing why, on a personal level, he was proud of them. And I can't imagine too many promoters taking the time after everything's said and done, after they have to clean up, after they have to do everything, pay everybody, everything's said and done, to take time to sit down with their champions and their fighters to actually express their personal emotions. It was amazing. Did you see the fireworks for each fighter? Like, yeah. <laughs> Dude, you were in the back when, uh, when they started doing the test run for that. I said, oh, shit, we have pyro? <laughs> like, we had fire. Like... <laughs> Some shows have smoke. Rami's like, no, if they have smoke, we have fire. <laughs> uh, the dude does it big, man. I, I love him for it. So uh, He honestly does. He does, man. But uh, I'll let you go. I know you're at work right now. I know you got things to do. But had to catch up with the WBC national champ, Ahmad Ibrahim, man. I look forward to, one, seeing you defend that belt on the East Coast. I look oh, yeah. forward to seeing how what comes in the in the future. One, should be coming after you, hands down. One should be coming after you, and I don't see why they wouldn't be. But that's that's a story for another day. But the options are open, man. Boxing, MMA, Muay Thai, the sky's the limit for you, man. You've only closed the chapter on this aspect of your story, and it was probably the most important one for you. So congratulations, man. I couldn't be Thanks, prouder. I couldn't be prouder of you. For sitting down, talking with me, and chopping it up. Always a pleasure, man. Oh, man, it's my pleasure. You know that, man. We go back a long time, and uh, seeing seeing this happen for you come to fruition, I, I like I said, I couldn't be prouder, honestly. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right, there he goes, Ahmad, the Palestinian golden boy, Ibrahim, the WBC national champion. Oh, my goodness, he got it done at WCK World, Cha- WCK World Championship Kickboxing Muay Thai. Matter of pride, he took out Adam Rothweiler, and he made it look easy. So for all, all oncomers, if you want a piece of the champ, bring it to the East Coast if you want a piece of Ahmad Ibrahim. And for Ahmad, I'm Adam Christ. Make sure you keep it locked to MyMMANews.com for all your fight news needs.